This week, Busika police station in Luero district was attacked and two officers shot dead. The 7.30 p.m. incident also left two other officers critically injured. Preliminary findings by the police indicate that the attackers, believed to be seven, attacked the station from three different directions. This is not the first time that such an incident has happened. Former Deputy Inspector General of Police Julius Odwe believes some of the occurrences can be blamed on loose gaps in the force. Does it mean that the police intelligence system is not working? If the police intelligence system is not working, which one is working that would have stepped in? So if another one has not stepped in, then it means that our country is open, is open to challenges. Whereas police spokesperson Fred Enanga believes that the motive of the recent attack is to steal guns, the retired officer believes there could be more to that. The, the guns might be intended for criminal activity. But the second aspect is that, uh, you know, it can also be anti-government, it can be political. He notes that there has been some laxity from many of the structures provided under the National Security Act, which leave the police exposed. National Security Council, which is appointed by the president to run the, and review security of the country. National Security Committee, where chiefs of security organizations meet with the responsible ministers regularly, every week, they address issues. Then the one of the district, district security committee and district intelligence committee, they are also supposed to work regularly. I don't know whether they work regularly in a manner that it is either weekly or monthly. Odwe also believes that the intelligence network is detached from both the local structure and civilians, making it hard for police to foresee any eventualities. By Ugandan system, every sub-county is now supposed to have a police station. And uh, this police station must be in touch with the district. District police system, led by the DPC, it has got uh, structures within the district. And that, those same structures are replicated at the sub-county. Even if the local security structures could be functioning well, Odwe, who retired in 2011, doubts if many of their recommendations are acted upon by the top organs. It could be that this matter is discussed either at the district or at the national level or at the institution of the security organization, say police headquarters. But probably implementation is the problem. Track records show that majority of the past attacks on police posts and their officers have occurred mainly in rural settings. In a town, people may be more well informed and more conscious about security. But people who have lived in a village with a lot of peace, they even don't mind who is going there. And in the village, you know, people are concerned with other things. Over the years, police have embarked on community policing as a way of improving the relationship between them and the civilians. This, according to Odwe, is still in theory. They are just talking. They are not probably doing it. And I think, okay, they could have been doing it, but not addressing certain issues like this one. It is possible that some of the personnel who are deployed there, they are not well trained. Or they are not enough. So you find that a police post where there are supposed to be like 12 people, they could be only a city. Over the years, the security sector in Uganda has benefited from the biggest shares of the national budget. Based on that, Odwe believes the logistical concerns from police should not be that much. The former officer with a 30-year career believes it is time that the police and the other security organs redirected their approach in handling security matters in the country. So talking to the communities is important. Then it too, they also look at the profile of the officers who are there. Nelson Omoya, NTV.